what are the absolute do's and don'ts if you're going to use any of these types of compound, I'm, I'm guessing he means any sort of anabolic uh, steroids uh, for bodybuilding purposes or anti-aging purposes? Two very different purposes. Um, absolute do's and don'ts. We have the standard of care do's and don'ts, which I don't think this audience is interested in learning about. Um, Again, we, I go back to, you know, maybe some of the Eastern Bloc countries having more information on this sort of thing. I may have mentioned it earlier, but we do have, uh, maybe it's as many as a half a dozen studies in English, I think in this country, uh, that show you can use up to 600 milligrams of testosterone sipinate per week without risking other problems that may occur, side effects other than what we just talked about, an elevated hemoglobin hematocrit. Um, you always have to watch out for what the excess of any hormone can convert into, mm -hmm. except for estrogen. Um, so you, you know, having said that, you always have to govern and modulate your your excess testosterone and perhaps your excess dihydrotestosterone when you're dealing with testosterone supplementation. Uh, with the steroids, that's a really difficult question because uh, we know again if you buy into the lipid issue, at least as far as cholesterol effectuating atherosclerotic plaque buildup. And again, that's a whole other issue we'll do another time. Um, but if you buy into that, then you're going to be concerned about your lipid profile for that reason. We know that all steroids are going to affect your lipid profile in a so-called negative way, meaning it's going to drop your HDL and raise your so-called bad cholesterol, the LDL. Um, so. That's a, I don't know if that falls into a do or don't. Those are just things. To, I don't think there are any absolute do's or don'ts, mm -hmm. except for the ridiculous ones like, you know, don't use a whole bottle a week of uh, testosterone sipionate, which would be, I don't even know, some ridiculous 10 and nulls of sipionate. Um, yeah, that'd be 2,000 minutes. There are no, like, don't mix this with that that I'm aware of. You know, again, thinking of just testosterone and different anabolic steroids. Um, What's the best advice you could actually give to, let's say, a professional bodybuilder athlete, which I'm sure you have as clients, um, if they were to ask you, I mean, I want to do this for a few years, I'm young, I want to have a long career, what, what's your best advice oh, for me? That's a great lead in because that one's easy, man. Get in, do what you got to do, and get out. Uh, my athletic interests were never uh, really bodybuilding, but if you look at, for example, all the... the uh, legendary Olympic lifters and power lifters the guys that went in and we all know today that you know prior to 1976 they were a large number of them most of them were using anabolic steroids because it wasn't banned until 76 mm -hmm. but even afterwards guys were sneaking the guys that got in set the records and got out are alive today for the most part the guys that got in the game and tried to stay in the game push the records you know stay in for the long haul they're dead. So, you know, uh, again, if you're going to do this, get in there and do it and get out. It's the chronicity of use that presents more of a problem mm. than, and I'm not talking about chronicity of use of replacement therapy. I'm talking about what we're talking about. Right. Excessive use. Yeah. Uh, the super physiologic dosages, you know, that's what gets guys in trouble. And, you know, we have them around today, and I absolutely am not going to mention names, but we all know that there are guys that have had trouble uh, because they, you know, used crazy dosages, and they used, um, you know, the, those doses for for so long. I mean, I can remember it was a joke. Even as I was growing up, hearing about these guys talk about, uh, oh yeah, I'm off now. I'm off the roids. And uh, then I'd overhear them talking about, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm only doing uh, 50 milligrams of Anadrol a day. <laughs> it's like that's off, you know. <laughs> Compared um, to what they're doing. And I know that in the earlier days, and you hear all kinds of stories. I wasn't there. I wasn't part of that scene. But you hear stories about, you know, the much lower doses uh, from before. And then every once in a while you hear, you know, some scuttlebutt that actually they were using crazy dosages too. Uh, but that would be the other take-home message is, you're right. I do see a lot of guys. At one point I had, you know, half a dozen of the top 15 or 20 Olympia contenders that I ha had seen in my office. And... There wasn't any difference in physique between the guys that were taking just that 600, just so happens, on their own, uh, 600 milligram uh, equivalent dose of testosterone a week, and the guys that were doing, you know, 
I never added it up. I was probably too scared. <laughs> my mind, you know, two and a half grams a week. Oh, wow. uh, the whole thing about, you know, there are only so many receptors. That's true. What, yeah. Where's it going to go right. after they're saturated? Okay? Right. These things, the, well, the oil-based products have long half-lives. Sipping eight, eight, eight day half-life. So it's not like you better slam more in there because, you know, there might be a receptor that doesn't have contact with the hormone. No, it's there. It's floating around for a long time. Gotcha. So the problem is it just gets converted to other substances. So you know, you're taking drugs for the drug. So, you know, again, get in, get out, and you don't need a whole lot of these drugs to compete in today's world as much as, you know. I realize it's changed a lot, and they're using a lot of other things like insulin and IGF-1 yeah. as a substitute for growth hormone. But um, that's a whole other talk about, topic about what they look like. But in terms of health, uh, you know, Being followed by a doc and, and several blood tests a year. I'm you sorry, can get, that goes without saying. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you're going to do this sort of thing, again, I'm not making judgments. I, you know. No, no, we're just trying to be helpful. I'm just saying, yeah, why not use every tool you have to, I mean, you're, you know, again, you're rolling the dice in a lot of, in a lot of ways. Uh, I mean, look at the poundages you're, you're lifting or the workouts you're going through. You don't think you're rolling the dice in some respect? Yep. Use every avenue you can to keep yourself as healthy as possible and avoid any potential or you know, any real uh, chance of injury. From yeah. That's great. No brainer there. I just want to continue this past question because you and I are just wrapping off camera and it's just too good to leave it off. So what would you say to the bodybuilders that don't want to take blood tests for mainly for a reason? One being the last thing I want to hear is that there's possibly going to be a problem with me right now and I can't stop right now. I got a contract, I got a comp competing. What do you say about about that to those people well again uh, it's pretty simple you got to watch your own back I mean you're making your decisions you're talking to I keep saying this I'm a registered libertarian so as long as it's within the law I think you ought to be free to do whatever you, you want to do and if you're gonna make the decision to do this then you gotta you know be as bold as you are to, 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 to face a doctor who's gonna probably not even possibly look at you and say you're absolutely out of your gourd. You know, these numbers, <laughs> look at them, they're going to kill you. And I think that's the reticence that a lot of these guys that are using super physiologic dosages have, aside from the legal aspect of it, yeah. from the medical uh, standpoint, you know, they don't want to lecture. And as you pointed out, a lot of guys, they're under contract. They don't want to hear what they're doing. It scares them. Um, and I think oftentimes it's a combination. And... Um, you know, nobody wants to be scared, but you do want to protect yourself. You're going to be really scared if we find out, uh, you know, you actually do have something that's going to kill you or make you really, really sick. So, you know, buck up and, and face the music early if that's the case, or just get in there and, and, and get the data that you need to make your own decision because that's that in between there we were talking about where, you know, there's a lot of guys that are doing it and saying, well, you know, I did go to that doctor and all he did was lecture me out of his office and uh, I know better because I did this for you know, six months, and all I got was bigger, stronger, faster, you know, not a plug for Chris Bell's movie, but, <laughs> uh, you know, they, they know better. They say, no, it doesn't hurt me. And, and you know, quite frankly, it's not a jab at anybody, but it's the truth. The doctors, how would the doctor, the standard doctor, know about this stuff unless they had a huge clientele that did this and gave them feedback or they had some personal experience? Because it's not taught in medical school. Even hormone replacement therapy, as of, you know, at least 10 years ago, certainly wasn't addressed in, in, in school. So, you know, they're going to see numbers that are out of range, whatever that means, and that's a whole other topic. Mm -hmm. And, of course, their first reaction is because they are, and I'm not making excuses for doctors either, but let's face it, you know, our job as a doctor is to take care of you. So we're driven to say, wow, look, this is really out of range. Watch out. you got to be careful. Don't do this sort of thing. I mean, yeah. you don't have to go that far. Yeah. I think there's some deference that needs to be had there. But, you know, the job is to explain what's outside of medical norms. So I think that touches on what we were saying off camera yeah. is that there's a lot of reasons not to do it, but do it, man. Get in there and take care of yourself. You've already made a decision to do something yourself, you know, so continue that same line of thought and no matter what, you know, browbeating you're going to get or whatever, get in there and get the facts so that you can do the best you can with those facts. Great. Thanks, Doc.